الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه أما بعد What is it that you want? Oh, I want a lot of things. Do you have the time to ask for all of these things? Don't go into details. Go into general things because Allah is generous and He'll give you more than what you ask for. There is a beautiful dua that the Prophet ﷺ used to say before he concludes his prayer. Now, contemplate upon this. It's so beautiful, so profound, so strong, and few of us memorize it by heart. The Prophet used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma bi ilmika al ghayba wa kudratika ala al khalq, ahyini ma alimta al hayata khayra li, wa tawafani iza alimta al wafata khayra li. Allahumma inni as'aluka khashiyataka fil ghaybi wa shahada. وأسألك كلمة الحق في الرضا والغضب وأسألك القصد في الغنى والفقر وأسألك نعيما لا ينفد وأسألك كرة عين لا تنقطع وأسألك الرضا بعد القضاء وأسألك برد العيش بعد الموت وأسألك لذة النظر إلى وجهك والشوق إلى لقائك في غير ضراء مضرة ولا فتنة مضلة اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان وجعلنا هداة مهتدين Oh Allah, by your knowledge of the unseen Who knows the unseen? No one except Allah So I'm asking Allah Azza wa Jal by His attributes And this is how we praise Allah By saying His attributes in the beginning By your knowledge of the unseen And your power over creation okay what is it that you want keep me alive so long as you know such life to be good for me and take me if you know death to be better for me inevitably we're going to die sooner or later but in this dua we acknowledge the fact that we're going to die and we ask Allah to choose our death time to be at a good time and not to make us encounter calamities and tribulations and fitna and torture and poverty, etc. So we're begging Allah Azza wa Jal. And then you say, O oh Allah, make me fearful of you, whether in secret or in public and this is sincerity to be fearful of Allah when in secret this is complete sincerity and I ask you to make me true in speech in times of pleasure and anger so I ask you to make me truthful because when I'm okay in a normal condition I usually say the truth, but when I'm angry, when I'm fighting with someone and disputing with someone, this is where I may slip and say something that is not truthful. And I ask you to make me moderate in times of wealth and poverty. When I am poor, definitely I'm going to be moderate. I'm not going to buy uh, uh, expensive toys and cars and things and live a lavish life but at times of ease and wealth this is when I need Allah's help to be moderate and I ask you for everlasting bliss and joy which will never cease what can be everlasting bliss and joy this can only be in Jannah this can only be in paradise 
And you may get a glimpse of that in this life as most righteous people have this, regardless of their wealth and poverty, because they have content of what Allah has ruled and decreed. I ask you to make me pleased with what you have decreed and for an easy life after death. Being content of Allah's decree is the highest level of happiness because you know that this was written 50,000 years before Allah created the creation. So whether you bang your head on the wall or you are quiet and content, it's not going to change. So better for you to be quiet and content and accept what Allah has ruled so that you would have a reward at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal. And easy life after death, when death comes, this is the end of this life and the beginning of eternity. If you get an easy life, then you are rewarded and favored and blessed by Allah to be admitted to Jannah. I ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face. Looking upon Allah's Azza wa Jal face is the ultimate of Naeem, of favors and blessings of Allah, of endless gifts in paradise. The highest level of reward is to look at Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah's face on the day of judgment. Not only that, I also ask you for a longing to encounter you in a manner which does not entail a calamity which will bring about harm, nor a trial which will cause deviation. I want to long to meet you, O oh Allah. Ask individuals, do you want to meet Allah? The vast majority would hesitate in answering because their logic works. Meeting Allah means death. I don't want to die. So they may refrain or at least hesitate. No, I'm asking you to give me a longing to encounter you, to meet you, but I want to meet you after having a good life without entailing a calamity. Yes, it would raise my level in Jannah, but I don't know if I'm going to be patient and tolerant and not objecting. So please don't let me be among those. And I won't, don't want any harm or trial which will cause deviation because I would like and I would love to remain steadfast on the straight path. Then you say, O oh Allah, beautify us with the adornment of faith and make us of those who guide and are rightly guided. What a beautiful dua. Wallahi, if we contemplate upon it, upon the messages included in it, we understand for 100% reality that our Prophet والسلام, is the Messenger of Allah. Because no one can formulate so much beauty in such concise paragraph. The ideas behind it, it's mind-blowing. We know and we acknowledge that the Prophet والسلام, was given the concise of speech, meaning he would say a couple of words that you need volumes to explain. Not because they're ambiguous, but rather because they include so much wisdom that definitely is a revelation from Allah and not from his own self. This is all the time we have. Until we meet next time, I leave you fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب